Today, it is possible to directly communicate with people hundreds of years in the future. All you need to do is write a message, add a few objects and records that say something about the time you're living in, and bury it in a box somewhere for future generations to find. That's how you make a time capsule, and in this video, we're looking at the most amazing time capsules in the world. Why bury a box when you can bury a car? The residents of Tulsa, Oklahoma ran an unusual competition in 1957 when they buried a Plymouth Belvedere as a competition prize with a difference. The winner couldn't receive the car for 50 years. All they had to do was predict what the population of Tulsa would be in 2007. The brand new car, along with a barrel full of artifacts from the Tulsa of the time, was lowered into an underground vault entombed with layers of concrete on top and then forgotten about for 50 years. The organizers had made a terrible mistake, though. The vault may have been able to sustain a nuclear attack on the surface, but it was vulnerable to water seeping through from below. The vault flooded and the car was ruined. Fortunately, the barrel survived, with its still pristine contents, including a flag of the United States of America with 48 stars. Restoration work on the car proved impossible, so it now sits in a museum. Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, was a man who spent his whole life focusing on future technologies. Back in 1983, when the idea of the iPad was just a twinkle in his eye, he contributed to the buying of a time capsule during the International Design Conference in Colorado. There were several contemporary 1983 items in the capsule, including a six-pack of beers and an album of the Moody Blues. But Jobs threw in the mouse from Apple's first ever computer into the 13-foot-long capsule, in the hope that by the time it was opened, the technology would be considered obsolete and curious. The capsule was intended to be dug up in the year 2000, but shifting land in the area meant that nobody could find it. It wasn't until 2013 it was finally located, a full 30 years after it was buried. Jobs sadly wasn't around to see it, but his mouse had survived the three decades unscathed. Steve Jobs isn't the only famous name associated with a time capsule. The famous French author Jules Verne, best known for his novel Around the World in 80 Days, also had one buried close to his tomb in France. Verne passed away in 1905, but it wasn't until 2017 that the steel box was discovered. Engravings on Verne's own tombstone, along with subtle clues in his work, alluded to the existence of the box. But it wasn't until archaeologists unearthed it that the rumors could be proven true. The etchings on the exterior of the box have been worn away by time and oxidation. And so the true meaning of the half-rotted contents is mysterious. There are a telescope and a ring, presumably both possessions of Verne, a coin from medieval times, and a key belonging to something unknown. Stranger still is a book about a mining treaty, a manuscript covered in references to alchemy and paperwork covered in undecipherable drawings and symbols. Just to add to the confusion, there's also information about the phases of the moon. Was this an elaborate prank by the great writer? Or is it just too clever for us to understand? The worry with burying a time capsule is that someone might just forget it's there and never find it. We almost lost the Steve Jobs capsule from 1993. One that was buried in New York in 1914 went missing for even longer. The delicately decorated bronze box had been sealed on Wall Street by a businessmen's association just before the start of the First World War, and then left to the care of the New York Historical Society who were told it should be opened in 1974. They put it into storage and then somehow forgot about it. It was almost the end of the 1990s by the time someone noticed it. So by that point, they just decided to wait a full hundred years before revealing the contents. Finally, the box was opened in 2014, revealing pristine condition newspapers from the day it was sealed, along with medals from military figures of the time and a telegram from the New York State governor of the era which spoke of his hope that all of New York's problems would have been solved by the time it was unsealed. Not all time capsules that are hidden away come with a pre-aged opening date. Some are just left to chance. 
That was the case for a 1901 capsule in Bolton, which had sat for over a century hidden in plain sight, inside the head of a lion statue, which was positioned to guard the old state house. The existence of the time capsule only came to light when the great-great-granddaughter of Samuel Rogers, the man who built the lion and arranged for the installation of the capsule, decided the time was right to share her family's secret. Inside are a number of official documents of the time, including a book about the foreign relations of the United States of America from 1896, and copies of all local newspapers. As the box was both air and watertight, everything within it was the same as it had been when it last saw the light over a century earlier. There's also a badge from the political campaign of Teddy Roosevelt, a nail from the Old South Church, and a piece of music signed by John Silver. A new time capsule is now being put in the lion's head and sealed up for another hundred years. A century is a long time for a time to stay unopened, but America's founding fathers Paul Revere and Samuel Adams managed to do better than that. They buried a capsule of their own in 1795, and it stayed there until 2015. The brass box was interred below Massachusetts' State House and had corroded badly over the years since its burial, but it had done a great job of preserving its contents. Inside was a silver plate crafted by Revere's own hands, a bronze George Washington medal, and a set of coins, including a valuable 1652 pine tree shilling, which has special historical significance because it was minted as a show of defiance against the British. The box had been buried as part of a special ceremony, marking 20 years of American independence. It's believed it had been opened once before in 1855 to be cleaned, although this can't be proven. Now it's back below the State House again, with some extra items from our own time added to it. A time capsule doesn't have to be words or pictures. Sometimes it can be music, too. When Daniel Lofredo Rota was helping to clear out his grandfather's home in Ecuador after the old man had passed away, he found 300 old-fashioned reel-to-reel magnetic tapes in the attic, untouched by the elements. These were the last remaining traces of his grandfather's life's work. Carlos Rota once owned and operated the Kaif Record Company, which dealt in Ecuadorian folk music during the 1950s. The reels represented every single master tape the label had ever created. Most of the tapes were labeled, but 80 unlabeled reels found in a suitcase are posing a mystery to Daniel as he attempts to identify it all. Amazingly, he got a lucky break walking through the center of his hometown of Quito when he heard a street musician playing one of the unknown songs. That musician was Laura Muenala, a blind accordion player who was now in her 70s, but had recorded with Daniel's father all those years ago. She's now helping him to identify the remaining lost music, which Daniel hopes to digitize and put online. Some people who bury time capsules think that a century or two isn't long enough. That's why this one, below the MIT campus in Cambridge, Massachusetts, has been ordered to remain sealed until 2957. It's more of a glass tube than a capsule, and was uncovered by accident by workers constructing a new building on the site. Although it hasn't been opened, we can see through the glass that contains electronic artifacts from the day it was buried in 1957 including an experimental alternative to the standard transistor known as a cryotron. Researchers went looking through the official records of the university and found it was buried there by then-MIT President James R. Killian Jr. in celebration of the opening of a new laboratory for nuclear science. To preserve the contents, it was filled with argon gas, and then the glass was sealed using a blowtorch. Hopefully, there's still someone around to open it 900 years from now. While it's true that some capsules get forgotten about and end up being opened later than planned, some are accidentally uncovered too early, even when the burying of the capsule was broadcast on television. Blue Peter is one of the most popular children's television programs in the United Kingdom, and their hosts buried a time capsule beneath London's Millennium Dome, which is now the O2 Arena, in 1998. Viewers of the show had been asked to send in their own submissions for the capsule, which they did en masse. And when it was buried, it was supposed to stay there until 2050. 
Unfortunately, contractors carrying out work on the building unearthed and damaged it in 2017. Although the casing was damaged, the contents were unharmed. They included a football from the France 1998 World Cup, a portrait of a dove to represent the peace created by the Good Friday Agreement, a book by the author Roald Dahl, and a Teletubby doll. The Blue Peter team are now planning to rebury it once more until 2050. Although we wonder what the point is, now everyone knows what's in it. The word capsule implies something quite small, but anything can become a time capsule if it's safely stored and locked away from the world. Even a whole apartment. This beautiful apartment in the very center of Paris sat silently for more than 70 years until she passed away at the age of 91 and left it to her heirs in her will. They had no idea it even existed. The woman, known only as Mrs. de Florian, had fled Paris as the Second World War broke out, moving to the south of France and building a new life there. She never returned. When a team turned up to perform an inventory, they were greeted by cobwebs, dust, and a perfect home from decades prior that must have felt like time travel to walk into. Tables, chairs, perfume bottles, and clothes were all exactly where they'd been left, waiting for their owner to return. Most breathtakingly of all, a full-size portrait of a woman in pink was discovered in the apartment, signed by the famous painter Giovanni Boldini. A stash of love letters found with the painting indicated that Boldini had been in a romantic relationship with Mrs. de Florian's grandmother, and that the painting was of her. It was sent to auction and sold for $3 million. We usually associate the rise of communism in Europe with Russia and the Soviet Union, but a time capsule discovered in the roof of Britain's Houses of Parliament in 2019 reveals that the communist movement of the 1950s had plenty of supporters outside Russia. It appears that the workers who were reconstructing Westminster Hall after the Second World War had communist sympathies and hid various propaganda inside a lead pipe, where it stayed for almost 70 years. A copy of the newspaper The Daily Worker, along with a January 2, 1950 copy of Russia Today, featuring a story about Stalin, were inside the pipe, along with Communist Party membership cards and tickets to a football match. There were also salary statements and a pamphlet about workers' rights. They've all been there all this time, sitting directly above generations of British politicians. If you're going to place a time capsule inside a new building, the most obvious place to do it is probably right behind the foundation stone. That probably explains why not one, but two time capsules have been found on the site of the old museum in St. Albans, England. Dating back to July 1898, the oldest capsule is a glass bottle containing contemporary newspapers of the time and a Victorian-era halfpenny. It seems the stone was disturbed in 1960, at which point a second capsule was reinterred along with it, this time with 1960s versions of the same newspapers and equivalent coins of the era. The museum is sadly now closed, and the site is being turned into apartments. When the new apartments have been completed and sold, the local council plans to use the money to fund the creation of a new museum, where the council will install the old headstone and the capsules which it kept secret for so long. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.